Hello, today is Wednesday, October 11th, 2023, and welcome to episode 260 of Fault Lines, the National Security Institute's podcast that gets you quickly up to speed three times a week on the national security and foreign policy debates shaking up America. I'm NSI Senior Fellow Lester Munson, and I'm joined here today by two of NSI's other senior fellows, Andy Kaiser and Morgan Vigna, as well as NSI Fellow Martha Miller. Uh, note, we're going to have to promote Martha to Senior Fellow shortly, because um, she's fantastic. Welcome, everyone. Uh, I want to talk about what's going on in the Middle East and what's going on with Ukraine, but really, I want to talk about uh, the dysfunction in Congress and how that is leading to a real problem for U.S. foreign policy. So as we learn more about what's happening with respect to the Hamas atrocities in Israel, it is becoming more and more clear that Iran is at the root of all of this. Iran funds Hamas. Iran provides material support to Hamas. It is giving, in all likelihood, tactical and strategic support to Hamas. And it is clear Hamas is carrying out uh, an Iranian-backed policy in the Middle East to destabilize democracies. So I think uh, there, there's a whole host of issues the U.S. has with Iran, from it, the nuclear file to activities in Syria, Iraq, uh, Yemen, other regional issues, Iranian support for terrorism broadly. The Biden administration, I'm going to go ahead and say this, has basically pursued a policy of appeasement with Iran. It is seeking to get back into the JCPOA. It may have some sort of tacit agreement with Iran on the nuclear file and some other issues, related issues, including the relief of U.S. sanctions. And if you if you dive into the details of U.S. sanctions relief on Iran since the beginning of the Biden administration, it's up to $50 billion worth of relief not just counting the $6 billion for the hostage exchange from a few weeks ago, uh, but including allowing Iran to export more oil. Uh, this is all happening, of course, at the same time Iran is providing material assistance to the Russian invasion of Ukraine, including drones, probably the same drones that were used by Hamas in its invasion of Israel and the atrocities it's committing there. So the root of all the problem here is Iran. The Biden administration policy is terrible. It is not working. It has been a massive failure. And I'm not, we're not even talking about the Iranian infiltration of the Biden administration, where people have had to be fired. Uh, national security clearances have been revoked. And there's a whole question about, about this penetration into uh, Biden political appointees in the national security space. There's a lot to talk about. We can't cover it all in eight minutes. I want to talk about the congressional aspect of this, which is in order for Congress to provide an alternative to this terrible policy, you need to have a Speaker of the House. You need to have a functioning majority. Right now, House Republicans do not have leadership. They're not running their House. It's a, it's a tragic situation becoming more and more terrible as, as the hours go by. When the U.S. needs to act, it needs to provide assistance to Israel. It needs to provide assistance to Ukraine. It needs to do more with respect to Chinese threats against Taiwan. And so I think it's time to call out the bad actors in the House, particularly among Republicans who are preventing Congress from doing its job. We are effectively uh, carrying out the policies of Iran. The folks who are stopping House Republicans from having a working majority, and those are the eight people who voted against McCarthy, are effectively helping Iran carry out its foreign policy in the Middle East and Russia's invasion of Ukraine right now. Uh, Andy, I want to go to you. You've, you're, you've got a long history in the House, like I do. A lot, you've done a lot of work there. You know these folks. What are your thoughts? Yeah, I do think this is such a terrible time to have the House have, you know, sort of unilaterally disarmed itself uh, from uh, being able to show leadership on the world stage, which is uh, grossly absent right now and, and very clear. Um, we do have this the speaker situation, which opens up a number of problematic fronts, right? We can't respond legislatively with an aid package, even with a resolution condemning the terrorist attack by Hamas, uh, given the House is paralyzed. The Speaker of the House essentially operates the entire body and all of the authority flows from that one position. So absent that, though the Republicans are meeting this morning and maybe we will have a resolution that, uh, you, know, uh, you know, cooler heads will prevail. Um, and that they'll come out of this vote this morning with 217 uh, Republicans supporting one person for Speaker of the House. It can get on with its business. But we even saw that the, the House leadership was unable to take a brief or there's a question whether they could take a brief, a classified brief over the, the weekend 
uh, as as to what was happening with the attack. So you have you know very tactical uh, sort of problems, and then these macro problems can't respond to threats around the world. And, and unless you mention two or three of them, of course, uh, anything else around the world could pop up, and we are not on the job at the moment. Martha, welcome. Your input here. Yeah, I mean, I think you know, congressional Republicans really need to grasp that this is these problems are connected in the sense that um, Iran and Russia are strategically aligned to undermine a global order that the United States has backed for decades. Um, and their aim is to destabilize destabilize uh, both regions and create a sphere of influence for themselves in their respective areas uh, geopolitically. So I think, I don't know how to, to persuade um, our congressional uh, friends uh, that, um, that Russia is a, a threat that is important um, to counter for the United States. Um, but but they need to wake up and realize um, that this is very much connected on a strategic level, if also tactically, as Iran supplies uh, Russia with weapons. Morgan, um, Mitch McConnell has called uh, for linking aid to Israel, aid to Ukraine, and aid to Taiwan in one big package to address all of these issues. What are your thoughts? Look, I think the Israelis, they need assistance. They need everything, all the support that they can get. They need JDAMs, they need JDAM tail kits, small diameter bombs, intel support, spare parts, iron dome interceptors, and the like. They need it, and they need it now in order to prosecute this war against Hamas. And I don't think it's very productive to tie in Ukrainian as assistance for Ukraine or, or, from what I understand, a desire to attach border funding. Let's not politicize this. We need to have a very clean funding package for Israel, and it needs to be done as soon as the House has a speaker in place. I understand that we have been pushing. There is a strong desire for it to deliver assistance to Ukraine. Israel is different. Israel is just a fundamental. We have a fundamentally different partnership with Israel. We have an Iron Dome system that has been co-produced with Israel. Um, we have been providing Iron Dome interceptors, and we have a strong MOU with Israel. Israel is a democracy, does not have a history of corruption like Ukraine, and we should deliver this assistance to Israel immediately. All right, I'm going to go ahead and riff and say uh, we have we have a disagreement here. I agree with Senator McConnell. We need to link all of these things together. They're all critical needs. Uh, this uh, The situation in the world is metastasizing. These are all linked and related. They are all critical to U.S. interests. Yes, we do have a special relationship with Israel probably more so than Ukraine, but our national interests are just as much under threat in Ukraine as they are in Israel. And that's not to neglect Taiwan, where uh, at the end of the day, that could be the, the worst conflagration of them all. Attached Andy, Mar Ukraine go ahead, Morgan. Slow everything down. That's going to completely politicize the process. You have so much negativity in the House right now on Ukraine. Don't bog down security assistance for Israel by attaching Ukraine to it. That's not productive and it's not going to pass. Let's be clear, if there was a free vote on aid to Ukraine in the House, it would pass 300 to 100. It would be a massive majority in favor of aid to Ukraine. And, and the real shame is that Republican, some, some Republican speaker candidates are saying they won't allow a vote on Ukraine. That is simply not acceptable. You cannot say we're not gonna vote on something that's a critical US national interest, in my view. And people need to insist that that vote happen. Uh, and, this, and if this is how we have to do it, then that's how we have to do it. Um, Andy, Martha, any final thoughts? Yeah, I think it's unrealistic uh, for those to be tied in, in the current makeup of the House body. So I think Republicans will be looking to tie border aid with Ukraine funding and do Israel separately, which, you know, I'm for however the process requires to get all three of those priorities done. Um, but I'm with Morgan. I think we have this very urgent priority that needs to happen, frankly, this week. Martha, final thoughts. Um, so essentially, um, you know, I think we need to push uh, for, uh, frankly, for the, all of all of the three um, priorities. You know, foreign aid is actually a very small piece of our overall spending in the United States, and this is something that people seem to lose um, sight of. 
uh, it's really, you know, in terms of discretionary spending, uh, that is small compared to our entitlements. So if people really want to solve our budgetary concerns, then they need to start looking elsewhere. All right. So some real fault lines there here in the uh, the podcast crew, uh, two on one side, two on the other on the question of how we provide this assistance. That's a wrap. Thanks so much to Tatum Clifton, Claude Jennings, and the NSI staff for their help in producing today's episode. Join us again on Friday, October 13th, for another episode of Fault Lines, the National Security Institute's podcast that gets you smart fast on the national security and foreign policy debate shaking up America. Fault Lines is now on YouTube, so check out our channel there for a video of today's episode. If you like what you heard or saw, please be sure to rate, review, and subscribe.